Predictions. It's Tuesday, November 1st, 22. Thank you for being here. Thank you for continuing to seek God as we seek to know him more. That's why this week we are looking at God's hand so that we might know love. Today, specifically, we are looking at light. We've talked numerous times here in the last several months of what amazing things are held within creation. If we would take the time to step back and just learn from all of the things that God has placed around us, we would certainly be further in our relationship with him. Roman speaks of God is not hidden. God has, has made himself known through all of creation. And I argue that one of the best places to see God is light. God speaks of the light regularly, but he's left breadcrumbs for us to discover, not only in what was experienced when scripture was written, but what we've learned since. Not to get all sciencey on us, but this is the electric, electromagnetic spectrum. I want to draw your attention. You can, you can see the tiny yellow sliver is visible light, meaning how we were created, how we were designed, with all the other wavelengths from smallest to largest, and yet that small sliver, that narrow sliver, is what we can perceive, what we perceive as, as, as light. Now, when scripture was written, let's take it a little bit more basic than the electromagnetic magnetic spectrum which God created. He also created the light and the darkness to give our, us a clue to where we should live and where we will thrive. We thrive, we've all experienced, we thrive in the daylight. It's easy to see, easy to navigate. We have the ability to perceive depth and distance all by what God has given us, what God has blessed us. Take that light away or dim that light even and our ability to judge distance and depth and navigate becomes almost impossible. Have you ever thought of that? We experience it daily. Enter a dark room, first thing we do is find the light switch. I can't navigate without having light on in this room. Yet we're willing to kind of just feel our way through the spiritual darkness without ever seeking God without ever looking for the light switch. That must change. If we desire to see God's hand, we have to choose to live in the light. It's a lesson that a four-year-old could understand. It's a lesson that we have known from the very beginning of our existence. That's why so many children prefer to have a nightlight on in their room or in the hallway. They know. Why would you make me try to navigate without light? 
Yet somehow, as adults, we're left groping in the darkness. I believe that everyone knows where we should live. But we often choose darkness because we feel like it hides our deeds, our actions. It's a lie. Although we can only see in a very narrow man spiritually, God can see it all. Nothing is hidden from him. What we believe is cloaked in darkness, we are living out in broad daylight. In order to improve, in order to get to where we need to be, we need to learn the lessons that we learned as a four-year-old and apply them to our relationship with God. And that's what John is writing to the churches. You know this. You've got this. Let me explain it in the most simple way. But after you hear these words, apply them to your life. 1 John 1, 5. This is the message we heard from Jesus and now declare to you, God is light. And there is no darkness in him at all. So we are lying if we say we have fellowship with God, but go on living in spiritual darkness. We are not practicing the truth. But if we are living in the light, as God is in the light, then we have fellowship with each other. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we claim we have no sin, we are only fooling ourselves and not living in the truth. We need to recognize that we were destined to live in darkness for the rest of our days and live in obscurity for eternity. Our ability to come into the light and thrive in the light only occurs through Jesus' sacrifice. To suggest that we were born holy and righteous and have no need for Jesus' sacrifice only proves that we are unwilling to live in the light. To deny Jesus' sacrifice is to deny God himself. There is no truth there. There certainly is no light. But if we confess our sins to him, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all wickedness. If we claim to have not sinned, we are calling God a liar and showing that his word has no place in our hearts. We have a choice. Stumble around in the darkness or come into the light. God has been calling us into the light since we were able to perceive the difference between light and darkness. We just allow the sun to rise and the sun to set each day without recognizing the power and the wisdom found in all of creation. If you had a choice today to live out your years in daylight or in darkness, which would you choose? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, 
for inviting us into the light. Only fools would choose darkness, stumbling and groping and falling and unaware of the dangers around us. All of creation testifies to your greatness. As we've learned more of about creation and how it's designed, your fingerprints are all over it. And there's lessons to be found there. A four-year-old doesn't need to know the electromagnetic spectrum to know that light is where we thrive. We thank you, Lord, for, for not hiding from us. Forgive us, Lord, for our ignorance, our poor perception. Open our eyes today, Lord, so that we might see and know the way and choose the life that glorifies you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, see you back here tomorrow. I love you, I miss you. Till we see each other again, be good. <laughs>